Hi, my name is Ryan Minerding, and I'm going to draw the Iron Man Mark I. I started on, at Marvel Studios uh, on Iron Man 1, and getting to design the Mark I is still kind of the highlight of my career, really. <laughs> he was uh, such a fun character, and working with John Favreau on it, and getting to know all the guys at Marvel back then. The studio was brand new, and everyone was so excited to be part of, essentially, like a startup studio. It felt um, the energy was just palpable. You know, one of the things about back then was they were so focused on the Mark II and III, the silver suit and the red and gold suit for Iron Man 1. I probably did two drawings before I did the final. <laughs> I sort of hit something that I think felt a little bit more detailed and, and, and slightly more real than what was sort of known from in the comics for, the, for this character, for this design. And they, uh, they sort of approved it much, much more quickly than I was expecting them to, frankly. Most of my work is either designing characters for the MC movies or doing keyframes for it. We'll have a script to try to understand like what everyone's trying to get out of that particular design. And we'll also be referencing the characters from the comics to see what version of that character is going to work the best for, for the story that um, the directors and the producers are trying to tell. So I kind of try to have all of that in my head when, when we're starting to draw. If it's just a, if it is just a character design, image, you know, there's a lot of it that just boils down to getting an attitude. Is it a tough character? Is it a, you know, relatable character? Is it, is it a villain? Are we trying to, what's the, what's the sort of point of view that we want to bring out in, in that illustration? Um, if it's a keyframe illustration, meaning to like do a specific story point, we're really looking at the moment in the movie and trying to understand the mood um, and how, like how, how to make it as dramatic as possible. Uh, can we base it so much on the, on, you know, the camera angle or the lighting? Um, or, you know, I like to I like to do a lot of stuff with facial expressions, so I'm usually most over-engineering a lot of the work that I do so that I can really create um, a moment that uh, captures a, a, you know, an expression on a face that, that helps tell the story. If it's really early and I'm just trying to jot, jot down ideas, I'll still, still, still do stuff with pencil and paper. But most of my work is digital. Most of the time I'm trying to create something that's going to sell an idea. And, and the work that, the specificity and the ability to change things that you can have when you do stuff digitally is, is just kind of hard to beat. I grew up doing a lot of pencil drawing and I actually got into airbrushing quite heavily, more like a, a illustrative version of airbrushing. Um, so it's, um, it's, I don't know, I, I also enjoy doing um, uh, some 3D work. I do stuff in ZBrush uh, when, we're, when we're working on characters like Thanos or the Hulk or something. We're trying to find a, um, a look and nail it so I, I can show the directors and the producers what a character's going to look like, like what their head gun is going to look like from multiple angles and, and essentially do a turnaround. Um, but also, I'm able to put expressions on the, on that character and show them, you know, what what the Hulk looks like in a neutral and what the Hulk looks like, what's sort of angry and and then very angry. <laughs> so much of my work is really based on the awesome work that's been done in the comics. Um, we're um, fortunate to have, like, in, in some cases with the characters, like 70 years worth of reference material, and I I love going back and looking at you know comics I would have read when I was a kid or or comics I was too young to have read when I was a kid and, and, and seeing the different, different uh, comic book artists take on things and finding ways of um, sort of taking that source material and turning it into something that's really useful for the, the film production um, is, is one of the best parts of my job. Um, I, I think also looking, looking at the Marvel Studios movies and, and how we usually approach design, there's a lot of thought about practicality and realism and, and what's going to be real for this movie versus a different movie. Um, so, like, looking at Captain America, not only from the point of view of what he looks like in the comics, but what would feel like a realistic take on that character. Um, meaning, like, he needs to be a symbol first and foremost and having that sort of start with him being in the in the USO show and allowing that that suit to be a little goofier than, than maybe you might have expected for a superhero, but letting Steve Rogers sort of hate the fact that he's in that suit at that point in the story. And then um, having him put on a leather jacket and a helmet and when he goes off to save the Howling Commandos to, to really make it clear that he's trying to be a soldier. And then at the end of that sequence when he comes back and everyone's cheering for him for what he's done and, and 
having him be able to see that there's a there's value in being a, a symbol and a soldier at the same time and landing using that as an inspiration for what his his final costume for that film is going to be like all of that all of that information is baked into the the the, um, the scripts at Marvel and you know that's just gold for trying to figure out what a character looks like and, and how to come up with things that are going to really um, work for the story. One of the fun things about the Mark I too is because it's so beaten up, like getting him, getting some lines down for it and then going back over it to, to really make sure it looks like he's, he's taken a beating at some bullet holes and dirt and scratches. And... I just throw a few finer. All right, I might call that one done. Hi, I'm Ryan Meiderding, and this is my drawing of the Iron Man Mark One.